The Out of Bounds Show, ESPN 105.9 The Zone. And we've got Show Me the Money, brought to you by Pearl River Resort and the Golden Moon Casino Sportsbook and Lounge. Award-winning Dancing Rabbit Golf Club. Bet 50, play 40. World-class golf. We'll be there Friday. Let's go ahead and give away a a room night and uh, two rounds of golf to Dancing Rabbit Golf Club and a gift certificate to Mom and M's. I like that. Via the text line, your favorite... What what do you want to do? Your favorite fair food? Yeah. Yeah. Or the one that you don't like. Either one. Jackson For Jackson Meadows, it's a fried Oreo. Which got some funnel cake in it, evidently. And uh, sounds like a big old stomach ache. But we'll see. Uh, favorite fair food via the text line 601-885-3776. Driven by your next John Deere tractor from any Ag Up equipment dealership. In the state of Mississippi, agup.com, agup.com. All right. Dave Bartu joins us on the Farm Bureau. Turned off. You know what you need. Because you got to somehow make that paper, right? Right. Show me the money. You come to the right place for that. Because it's time for Bow Bounce. Show me the money. To show you the money. All right. Diamond Dave Bartu's taking some crazy pills. He's back from elk hunting. He joins us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. Dave Bartu, what's up, buddy? Dude, uh, favorite favorite fair food? Now, you know, question, do you guys have a gin and tonic booth at your fair? No. Because if you do, that's that's where I... Okay, so then, then, then I'll default to the elephant ear. <laughs> You're like me. Do you have a Tito's and club soda? No. Okay. Well, then I guess I'll take something. I love it. I love it. Do you have yeah, a gin and tonic give, give, booth? Oh. Uh, yeah. Give me the elephant. Give me the elephant here, then. Elephant. If, uh, if I can't that? get a double D and T, baby. Hey, do y'all have a fair near you? Do you still go, or did you leave that years ago once your kids grow grow oh, up? I was, no, I I I I like going. See, I was a four H kid growing up. You know, um, I know you're shocked, right? High school was um, yeah. High school is 11 miles away for me. So, uh, you know, we, we, I grew up raising, raised on our own protein, canned our own food, uh, all that stuff. So, you know, the fair, um, you know, the, the fair was part of my life for, you know, from as, as little as I can remember, you know. Um, and, the, you know, and the fair, the fair basically for me, the fair is like pan camp. You know, I mean, parents drop all of these teenagers off at the fair with tents yeah. and hang out there with your animals and, and each other for a week. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it was band camp. So no, fa- the fair, uh, everything about it. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty cool with it, man. That is awesome. Do, is where you're kind of out from Portland. What is, uh, how far is the closest fair to you? I mean, how, how, how what, what is the proximity? Yeah, the, the county fair is probably 15 minutes from here, 17, you know, oh. within 20. Uh, State fair in Salem is about an hour and a half. Okay. So, um, you know, so yeah, it, it's, yeah, that was, that was a big part of my life when I was, a, you know, a kid. Yes, I do have a, I'm sure mom has a shoebox full of red, white, and blue ribbons from all sorts of fair entries for me when I was a kid. Okay. All right. Dave Bartu, 4-H club, and enjoyed the fair growing up. He joined Diamond Dave, now turned handicapper to the stars. He joins us on the Farm Bureau <laughs> Insurance Guest Line. So, parents out there, if your kid's in 4-H, you can know that they'll eventually become a, uh, a handicapper, and I think that is one hell of a profession. Okay, so let's start with Ole Miss at South Carolina, Bartu. Um, oh, I'm staying away from this right away. <laughs> I mean, I without even looking. No, I mean, dude. I mean, in in, in I'm I'm up in, I'm I'm what? I'm at six thousand feet, and you're texting me, dude, dude, Kentucky, dude, Oxford. Holy crap! You know, and, and so from from a mental standpoint, 
right? I, I think from a mental standpoint, what are we going to get out of Ole Miss this week? You know, we, we know South Carolina's going to be jacked up for it, but is Ole Miss going to bounce off of this or sink off of this, right? And, and not only is it 18 to 22 year olds, but now you have 18 to 22 year olds that are being paid and are being paid no matter whether you win or lose. And you have 18, 22 year olds that are heavy into the transfer portal. How many of the guys that haven't been there forever care? Right. And, you know, it, and so from an emotional standpoint, and, and I'm not saying Ole Miss is out of it, not by any stretch, but from an emotional standpoint, I can't even think about betting on this game, no matter what the number set. OK, so that, that's just that's just my take right there. Now, when you look at the numbers, you got South Carolina is a nine point dog at home. Uh, the total is 53 and a half. And looking at the numbers, the worst unit on the field. Um, is South Carolina offense, South Carolina defense. Uh, Ole Miss is still fifth in total scoring efficiency on defense, 14th on offense. So, you know, by those numbers, it leans heavy towards Ole Miss. Uh, I slightly lean over on the 53 and a half, but with that Ole Miss defense, uh, I think it's, it's always underrated with Pete Golding there because you have Lane on, as the offensive coordinator. But that 53 and a half is also right in the middle. So th- there's two things there that just take me off this game entirely. Okay. So Ole yeah, Miss has the better staff. That, Ole Miss has. Yeah, they got, they, they got the better staff. More they talent. Better talent, right? Yep. Uh, out of South, yeah. South Carolina defensive, they're coming off a bye. So they haven't played as many games as a lot of teams, as you know, Bartu. But, but mm-hmm. South Carolina. Do you have their offensive and defensive scoring efficiency numbers? You mentioned Ole Miss is really yeah, de- de- good. Yeah, defensively, they're at 63. Ooh. Offensively, they're at 28. Now, I, th- I threw out the FCS games, okay? We're, we're, we're through five weeks, so I've thrown out all the FCS games and, and, and gotten rid of that. Um, and, you know, so I still don't really know exactly who South Carolina is. Um, but offensively, look, they've, they've, they've scored points. I, I still don't know. I mean, so far, I think you'd agree, one of the one of the top ten greatest wonders of the season so far is 31-6 South Carolina at at, uh, at Kentucky. But how the heck did that happen? Right. right. Uh, that was just a, a, a tidal wave of a trap game, it seems like, to me. But then you turn around, and they scored a ton on LSU. Wait a minute. We've been saying that for for two years, weeks now. Right. I mean, since last year. I mean, LSU's defensive scoring efficiency is ninety first. Last year at this time, it was ninety eight. Good Lord, LSU! What the hell's in the water of Baton Rouge? Okay, yeah. So that's that's a little side note right off the top of my head. You know how I like chasing different uh, different paths here, but with with South Carolina, sixty third on defense. So the the defense so far has been the weakness there. Uh, but but Ole Miss is still incredibly balanced offensively and defensively. I just like I said, emotionally, I don't know what's going to show up. Right? This is where the transfer portal really scares me. Is the psychological part of losing? Because if you're heavily dependent on guys that are just looking for the next payday, do they shut down when the going gets tough? Because they're getting paid either way. Right, Ole Miss can lose out, and every transfer guy that they got in free agency, they're stroking the check, dude. It don't matter, right? It's guaranteed pay for a lot of these guys. And so that's the emotional side of sports betting with college football now that, that frightens me because we don't have really any data on it to decide, okay, how much does this affect these guys mentally? Diamond Day Bar 2, Handicapper to the Stars, brought to you by Pearl River Resort. He joins us on ESPN 105.9 The Zone. He does not like this game um, as far as betting it whatsoever. I think he's fascinated in how it will play out and what could happen considering who and what both teams are. Ole Miss, better coaching staff. Ole Miss, better talent. It's in South Carolina. All right. Uh, Auburn at Georgia. God, Jekyll and Hyde, Auburn's giving away games. I don't think they're a bad football team at all. No, Auburn, well, at, I don't. I don't think they're. I don't think they're minus twenty four and a half either. Do you think they're twenty four point dogs? Yeah, no, I don't think that they're 
minus 24 point dogs, even though sure. Georgia's yeah, and Georgia's coming off playing Bama and this is in Athens. So which way would you go with it? Also, the total is 53 and a half again. Right. Um, which, which, which makes me want to, uh, one of the things I'm going to do for you, dude, uh, I'm going to take a look at scoring this year versus last year because I'm seeing a lot of 53 and a half. So it used to be 55 and a half was the middle. Now it's down to 53 and a half. And I'm wondering if the new clock numbers are just tweaking the needle to, to, to lower scoring totals. But uh, here's another emotional game, right? Georgia on the road, um, down to Bama, up to Bama, lose to Bama, the physicality of that whole football game. Um, and now you have a, a two and three Auburn coming in, uh, kind of a dangerous game here, in my opinion. Um, just from the standpoint of, you know, Georgia offensively hasn't entirely figured it out, I would say this year. Um, but all, you know, Auburn's Jekyll and Hyde too. Uh, in terms of betting this game, I lean under on the fifty-three and a half. Uh, I, I like that direction because I think both defenses uh, are right now better than both offenses. George is tough because they've played arguably the toughest schedule in college football season to date. Um, so I expect them to just get better going forward. Oh, that's uh, a good point, Bart. Hold on. Bartu's well, just hit on yeah. something. George has played Clemson on a neutral site at Kentucky and yeah. at Bama. Damn. Yeah. That, okay, go ahead, Bartu. Dude, right? I mean, you, you face the Clemson defense. Right, uh, which is which isn't that good, but they they destroyed the Clemson offense, which has just been putting up points. And then yeah, you got Brad White, uh, and then you, and then you have um, the Alabama defense. So you know it, it, it is uh, it's been a it's tough to gauge Georgia in terms of where they're going to be at the end of the year because the schedule has been so front loaded. Uh, but Auburn, I'm, I'm I personally I'm taking the points in this ball game. Um, I'm, and this is the psychological side. I, I think Georgia is going to, this is going to be kind of a trap game, a downer, right? They're going to go out, they're going to win the football game, but you look up at the, you look up at the scoreboard and you go, Oh, Auburn, they're two and three. They just lost. That is a, Auburn is a really easy team to overlook for Georgia this week. I think it's really easy to overlook. Especially I agree. Off the Alabama game. I'll right? take, th- um, and I don't know who, you, yeah. Who does Georgia have next week? Can Jackson look that up real quick? You look that up real quick. Yeah, I've got it right um, here. And, and and yeah, and I lean the under fifty. Mississippi State, the mighty Bulldogs of Mississippi State, twenty twenty four. Oh, yeah, not a truck game. So, um, I, in in this football game though, uh, I'll take Auburn plus twenty four. Okay. Uh, and I lean under twenty three and a half in this. Day. Okay. Yeah. All right, Dave Bar two, Diamond Dave on the Out of Bounds Show, one oh five nine the zone, ESPN, brought to you by he's on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. And the show is presented by Spring Street Cigars in Startville, Oxford, Hattiesburg, and the other locations. Uh Bar two, let's go Tennessee. God, Arkansas is on a brutal run. Auburn, A and M, and now Tennessee. Tennessee at Arkansas, Tennessee laying 13 and a half and the totals 59 and a half or two. Dude, do you, do you know who Tennessee is? I mean, is this a re, is this, is this team as real as it looks? Because like, right, right now the number one in scoring efficiency defense, the number four in scoring efficiency offense. And I know listeners going, dude, they ain't going to play nobody. Yeah, I know. But that those are still impressive. Very, very, very impressive numbers through. Uh, five weeks, but Arkansas it has been playing tough football. You know, their, their numbers aren't anywhere near Tennessee. Um, but, you know, what, what I circled yesterday when I was going through the numbers, because I started with all the SEC games, and I don't really have a lean in either one of these. Because, yeah, Tennessee is, is four on offense, one on defense. Uh, Arkansas is 68 on defense, 36 on offense. So Petrino is doing a real good job offensively there. Um, so I don't have a strong lean in this one. Uh, if, if I had to lean something, uh, I'm leaning over 59 and a half, right? If, if, if we're at the timeout lounge and Dave will bet 20 bucks, I'll put 10 on over 59 and a half because the strength in this game is offense. Uh, and I'll put Tennessee minus 13 and a half 
because you look at these numbers and Tennessee is just why why not walk with the devil instead of stand in front of them? Um, you know, until Tennessee shows me really who they might be, uh, I'm just going to assume they're going to be that good. Uh, and I'll, I'll I'll lay the 13 and a half points, but not comfortably. All right. He'll lay the 13 and a half, but not comfortably. Let's go Michigan at Washington. And Washington is laying two and a half. And the total is 41 and a half or two. Washington, Washington laying two and a half or is, or is Michigan laying two and a half? Who's the favorite there? Washington. They're laying two and a half. Washington favorite over Michigan? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. Um. And uh, the total, what did you say? 42 and a half? 41 and a half. Oh, God, so low, so low. Um, defensive football game, though. 29th and 34th in defensive scoring efficiency this year for these two teams. Okay. Uh, Michigan's defense, obviously, carried, just the players alone carried over from Michigan uh, very well. Washington, uh, Steve Belichick is – now, he still has dad in the house. Um, but Steve, in his three years as a D.C. at New England – um, was the number three defensive coordinator for scoring efficiency in the NFL. This guy really knows how to uh, call a defense. I don't believe Jed Fish can really call an offense. Uh, and so I think this is going to be a really big defensive game. Offensively, it's number 80, Washington, number 56, Michigan. Um, if I can get points in this, I got better talent, right? So I got better talent, and I have better defense, and I got a better offense, and I'm getting two and a half points. Heck, if, if Michigan's favored by two and a half, I'll lay the two and a half. So I really like picking up two and a half points with Michigan on the road. 41 and a half is tight. Uh, and anybody out there, if you're doing your own numbers, if you're leaning under the performance right now, leans under in this game as well. So I personally wouldn't bet it, but just for your own personal due diligence, if you're on the under – the numbers back that up. Who? Diamond Day Bar 2 on the Out of Bounds Show. Brought to you by Pearl River Resort. Handicapper to the gods. We're going through the games this week. We've still got time. Ooh, we don't have a lot of time. we got to get Bar 2's bangers in. All right, so I need about a minute here, and then we got to <laughs> do Bar 2's bangers. I'm going to crash, crash your show tomorrow. No, I'm going to crash your show tomorrow. Oh, even better. All right, Missouri at yeah, A&M yeah, yeah, real I'm quick, on. and then we'll do Bar 2's bangers. Um. You know, the uh, with, with uh, Missouri at A and M. Look, A and M's the offensive scoring efficiency is ninety second. They're not producing any yeah. points, but Missouri's defense is only fifty six. I, I I think these two teams. Um, I hate to use the word, but I know fans love it. I kind of think these two might be a little fraudish. I don't think they're that good, you know. And, and so um, it's forty eight and a half uh, point total. Both defenses are better than both offenses. Uh, so I like under 48 and a half. As for who's going to win this game, uh, A&M's favored by two and a half here, but their performance is, is pretty even to Missouri so far this year. Uh, I'm going with the home team talent. Let's get rid of the points. Let's make it a one-point game, right? Like 24-23 A&M money line in that football game. Ooh, all right. You may not have your bar two's bangers yet, so do you want to just hit another game or two on the way out? No, I'll, 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 give, I'll give you two bets. Okay, that I like this week because okay, people the SEC, cause there's two more are games enjoying this. We didn't hit on. Yeah, like there's two more games that we didn't hit on. So Florida and UCF, dude. How about UCF just crapping the bed at home last week against Colorado? Is that that's like double negative coach effect losing to Pat Shermer and Dion? Um, double Florida negative Pat coach effect. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's, it, 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 it's, it's terrible. But look at UCF. UCF against FBS competition this year is 95th in scoring efficiency, dude. Yikes. 95th. They are terrible. Florida's 31st. Defensively, they're about the same, 58 and 45. So I get Florida in the swamp with better talent and better performance so far this year. I'm taking Florida plus two and a half at home against UCF. The total 61 and a half, I don't trust that either. UCF at 95th 
fifth in scoring efficiency so far this year. They only put 21 up against Colorado. Hell, Nebraska put 28 up in the first half. How bad you got to be only put 21 up against Colorado or whatever the final score was. But it wasn't very good. So I like Florida at home uh, plus two and a half. And you got Alabama at Vanderbilt. Now, obviously, you've got Georgia hangover to be considered here, right? But you have the number one scoring efficiency offense in all of college football in Alabama going up against the 90th defense. Alabama is going to hit the 55 and a half on their own. Okay? <laughs> but here's the, here's the other thing I like with it, though. Bama's defense is number seven. But Vanderbilt's offense, since making an offensive coordinator change, Beck's doing a great job. Vanderbilt's 26. So we got, we got number one and number 26 offense in the country. And the number seven and number 90 defense. So I can see, I think you and I can see Alabama throwing up a 50 bagel on this thing. Yeah. All by themselves. But I think Vanderbilt's offense is really good. Um, and all we need out of them is 14 points, 20 points. Right. Right. You think about it. If you get, if you get 14 out of Vanderbilt, that means you need 42 out of Alabama. Mm-hmm. Right. And you and I can go, oh, number one offense versus 90th defense could be 42 to 14 at halftime. So of all of the SEC games, of all of the SEC games uh, that I really like to bet on right now, it's those two. I like Florida plus two and a half, and I like Alabama, Vanderbilt over 65 and a half. Boom. Bar two's bangers. Brought to you by an ice-cold Budweiser and wings at Martin's in Livingston. Love you, buddy. Glad you went hell- elk hunting and had a great time. Yeah, it was it was good. I'll, uh, I'll crash your party tomorrow with five minutes of, uh, of ticks right at the end, okay? Oh, I love it. I love it. Be good, man. Make sure to yell at somebody okay. later today. Uh, we are the Out of Bounds Show, ESPN 105.9 The Zone. Woo, we're driven by your next Ford Explorer. And uh, Ford Bronco from Mack Hike Ford, I-55 North in Jackson. Don't forget that Justin Waite at Mack Hike Ford wants to buy your car. He'll come to you. You need to sell your car. You don't have time. You're at work. He does this all the time. Justin Waite at Mack Hike Ford will come to your office or your home and tell you what they will buy your vehicle for. Justin Waite, Mack Hike Ford. We'll buy your vehicle this week. We'll see you tomorrow.